Hello and happy holidays. We'd like to welcome you to our channel. And if today is your first time, we're invited to look through over our 300 videos that are organized in playlists, as we're very confident you will find something that you will enjoy watching and also might inspire you to build something yourself. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year and we'll appreciate your help with that. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Today we're going to show you a, a fun and uh, we thought simple project but turned out to be a little more complicated. As we were going through our scrap, we came across a piece of uh, uh, pallet wood that uh, happened to be cedar. And, and this is that piece, which of course we cleaned. It doesn't look like it looked before, but you're going to see it in its normal form during the video. And using this piece of wood, we build napkin holders. What? Napkin rings. Napkin rings, what's the difference? Napkin rings. Napkin rings, not napkin holders. I've been corrected by Miss Wizard. So this is a fun, uh, interesting project. Uh, however, because cedar is a very peculiar wood and we did have some uh, knots, as you can see in this piece of wood, we had some challenges making the inside hole, but in the end we persevered even though we used every single drill <laughs> device we had in the saw, right? Oh, yes. So please stick around and see how we did that. And of course, you can finish it a different way than we did. You can leave it unfinished, you can paint it, right? Or you can uh, burn it like we did here. Since this is our favorite way to finish things that they are in the kitchen. So stick around and we'll show you how to do it. So, we found from our scrap what we think is the ideal uh, piece of wood for this project. And this actually came out of a pallet. And we're going to run it through our planer first to make sure that we have all the, the sides. Yeah, it's a joiner. I call it a planer. It is a smoother thingy. A smoother thingy. If we're being technical about it. Yeah. I'm speeding up this because this project has a lot of repetitive things. It's a simple project, but takes a little bit of time. So I do not think that uh, it is very interesting to see every detail because here I'm just planning for a while and I'm going to let you watch some of it in uh, a speed up mode because I want you to see how an old board that came out of a pallet became really very nice and smooth hard to recognize it as pallet wood okay so we're going to start by after we finish uh, facing our board we face it on all four sides we chose a Fosner bead that we believe is the right dimension to make our hole and now we're going to start the process of making the hole and you clamped it so that it doesn't wiggle oh.
this piece of wood was particularly hard to make a hole through because it was very hard and it was full of knots. I left all this footage here, sped up, because I wanted to demonstrate that even in a simple project you might have difficulties. This board was very dry, very thick and had a lot of knots. And my drill press is not a direct drive, but rather a belt driven and it can stall very easily on hardwood, as you can see here even in the sped up uh, parts that I show you. In any case, I want to demonstrate the difficulty that you can have when you utilize certain tools with certain hardwoods. I think it's valuable to understand that patience is very important when you work in any project and that by going slow and steady and sometimes by changing the tool, you are going to always be able to finish the project without difficulty. I could have easily skipped these steps but I wanted to show you the reality of how it is to do some woodworking projects even those that seem at first glance to be rather simple ones. So while we're having the drill press out, we're going to make all the holes we need. So to minimize the amount of work we have to do and we don't have to move from machine to machine to finish the project. So we're putting the second one. Oh. We're putting the second one far enough apart from the first hole so that we can make a cut right in between them and we'll be about, about an equal distance. All right, folks, and we have made our two openings. Get down. It's in front of your face. <laughs> there you go. We made the two openings, and now we're going to draw a rough shape of what we want to do, and we will continue in the uh, band saw. friends and we have two cubes and at this stage you can leave it like this other than cutting it to size this is not the, the width we're going to cut it in two or three so but we also do this how we're going to, to give it some shape or not we'll also try to give it some shape but you could stop here other than cutting it to the final dimension so we're going on and then uh, do the next step and we'll be with you.
We just have a little plastic lid from a container that we're using to make our shape so that we know exactly where to cut. So I'm just placing it on top of my block. I'm drawing hood corners. Yep. I'm leaving the using of the sanding machine in normal speed so you can see some detail of how to get rid of burn marks and how to smoothen uh, curves and corners so in other words if you're interested in the technique you can observe it if you are not you can skip to 1355 and not see the rest of the sanding process We're now marking the the final dimension of our uh, holders, the towel holders, and then we're going to cut them in the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. so
So we're doing some final sanding on the pieces before finishing them. And of course this is not very exciting to, to watch so we're not going to uh, subject you to this but uh, we're going to be right back when we're finished. I find the burning technique of wood fascinating so I'm leaving it in this video clip but if you want to skip it, if you do not uh, care to watch it, then you can go to 2012 and you are not going to be uh, having to wait until you see the next phase of the project. Thank you. gloves which can help but be aware you can still burn the glove and burn yourself if you're not careful. And why we're doing it? The oil helps bring out the grain and it uh, protects the finish. This is just grapeseed oil and it's food safe. So. Makes 
said, a little, look a little bit different. If you can see that comparison. This one on the, the left is oiled, the one on the I'm right. I'm not sure that it showed you in the camera. Mm, a little bit. Not as much as I'd like, but a little bit. I mean, it shows when you're doing it, but mm -hmm. they would absorb it very Pretty quickly. quickly, yeah. All right, so that, that is the oiling process. Mm -hmm. That's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. It really means a lot. If you didn't, there is still a very nasty rumor that the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what you want to see in this channel. And again, this is our finished project. We think it came out very nicely. What do you guys think? This is when the two of you talk. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. It is a useful little item. And the wood didn't cost us anything. It cost us a little bit of time, a little bit of propane, and a lot of drilling. I mean, that was the, the most difficult part of the whole project, I think. So each of us are getting a shoulder massage. By whom? We all each drill, other. you know. So... <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching the Urban Homesteading channel and we want to, to wish from our family to yours Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a very happy and prosperous 2019 From the Grass Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida and the Urban Homesteading channel Happy Holidays, we're going to see you soon